untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. First draft of the Lord of the Rings, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast in the early Axis event. Pack one, pick one, opened King of the Oathbreakers. Pretty difficult to remove, so it's not a bad card here. What else do we have? We've got the uh, Healing House untapping permanence, can help us ramp as well. The Fire Leaper is a decent 2-drop, especially if we can increase its power a few times. Antish Restoration for more of a ramp deck. So nothing that really competes with the King. Some OK blue card and the Knots to tap a creature, scry one draw. And then the uh, Mirkwood Bats can also be quite good alongside food tokens and other creature tokens. The Guide could be OK in an Elf deck where you care about scrying. And uh, yeah, that's about it in this pack. So I'll take the King. And then I'm not 100% committed to black-white, but if we can end up black-white, that would be nice. Follow that up with maybe a Samwise, which can return something that died. Could provide a bit of value. A soldier, another spirit. Not that there's a ton of spirit synergy throughout the set, but it is still an individually fine card with flying. So I could see myself taking soldier over Sam. But being able to get that 2 for 1 value can be nice. And there's a long list of the ends. Fun mini game if you can keep naming different creature types and get plus 1 counters. Birthday escape also quite good for a uh, blue red spells deck perhaps. Where you can also make a ring bearer. The uh, chancement elves for the elf deck. And then muster can also be quite good to make a 1-1 one -one draw card. Good for sacrifice decks. I guess we'll try same. Take the uncommon over the common here, but could be that the soldier is just a better card. This is also legendary, which could matter. And yeah, there's potentially a payoff for casting legendaries. Whenever we cast a historic spell, we get to make a treasure token. Gloin's pretty good. There's fog in white as removal, not the best removal. Same with the Morgul knife wound. Bit conditional in nature. If our opponent's got a great creature in play, then they can still keep it around to maybe leverage its abilities. The uh, troll, as one of the many land cyclers, is also pretty decent. Another muster is fine. Yeah, I think we'll uh, take Gloin here, keep our options open, and then see what else we get. The trickery there as a counter spell is also decent. What's the pack telling us now? Banish in white, a bit of a clunky removal spell, but it is still removal. There's another muster, could be good. In red there's Oliphant, which I also don't mind as a land cycler. It is possible we can end up splashing Gloin in a black-white deck if we pick up some of the mana fixing. There's even a land that helps with casting legendaries on the splash. So muster versus banish. Maybe we should try Banish, just to make sure we pick up enough removal. And we're a bit more committed to white than black, I guess. And next up, Legolas for the blue-green deck. There's Torment of Golem, make the opponent discard a mass 2. Could be alright. Another troll. Could also be good mana fixing if we want to splash a bit of black since we can just get a Swamp without needing black mana in play. And then the red cards are eh, pretty replaceable at 4 mana, I would say, even though they're fine. Vanguard I also like as something we can potentially sacrifice multiple times. But let's try the Troll. Now we're seeing a pretty late Bath Song. Pretty good card in blue. Nothing else that really jumps out. Couple pump spells here. Many partings for a food deck. So it could just take a crusher. Possible we end up red black, and then this can pretty consistently attack and block. Okay, now I'm liking the rider. Perfect in a legendary deck as it's a 3-2 that draws. 
So that's the type of payoff we're looking for when going black-white with lots of legendaries, and the ring tempting us can also make a legendary, of course. And then there's a few more basic land cyclers. Ants Fury also kind of late as a removal spell, but haven't had a great reason to jump into green so far. And uh, could take another Crusher now, even though the uh, Rider kind of points in a slightly different direction. A Lemboss always a fine filler to drop if we don't get to play a creature instead. I'll try the Crusher. Are seeing a couple decent blue and green cards late. Birthday Escape especially. Kind of surprising to still be in the pack since it's a pretty powerful card to enable some of your various synergies. But we'll uh, stick to red for now. Could take our two mana creature. Battle Scarred Goblin, better in an aggressive deck. Would go well with a double crusher. The War Beast, decent curve topper as well. But we already have a decently high curve, so I'll try the Goblin. If I were more in blue, maybe I'd taken the Birthday Escape, then Knots here would have been the pick. So not getting incredibly clear signals on which color is wide open. Pretty all over the place right now. Uh, Blade goes with humans, that's not really our specialty. So I'll try the Basin, could be okay as a mana sink. And then now a couple black cards. Troll of Casa Doom, number two, versus a knife wound. Berserker also an option. I'll take another troll. With Double Troll and King, we could go red-white and basically splash black if we wanted to. Don't think I need escape. Alright, some pretty decent cards late. Let's just go Triple Crusher, see how that pans out. 4-4 four, four, Trample, 4-4 four, four isn't bad. Okay, we opened a pretty bad rare, probably one of the worst ones in the set, Forge and you. There's Nazgul in black, that's pretty good. Wizard's Rockets for mana fixing. Although we already have double troll and we might just go black as our primary color now. And then there's a Mordor Muster which could be okay. Lost to Legend also, a decent removal spell for two mana. There's plenty of legendaries to target. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking the Nazgul here. And then we might pivot into red-black. So our white cards. King we can potentially splash. Although then I would still need some mana fixing, because of course if we're red-black then the troll's not fixing for white. Okay, there's a pretty nice one. The instigator. No amazing white card, so Instigator seems like the pick. And then we want to potentially prioritize more amass cards to grow our team. And some sacrifice outlets would also be nice. Oliphant could also be good. Great Hall we can maybe wheel, and that can also help Splash King and some other legendaries. Best card in the pack might be... The flyer here. There's fog as a medium removal spell. You cannot pass could be okay if we have a lot of legendaries as one mana instant. And uh, there's warg, although we already have triple crusher, which kind of fills a similar role. Um, so I don't know if I really need torment either at four mana. And a third troll might be a bit much. So unclear what to take. Fire could also be a finisher potentially. So maybe I just take the Wizard's Rockets, which is pretty flexible, helps me splash, since I don't know where we're headed yet. Gimli in green. Could be okay in kind of a red-black splash green sacrifice deck. Although we're kind of lacking some of our sacrifice synergies at the moment. Watchdog's good in the food deck. Patrol could be a sack outlet to combine with our... A Brash Instigator. So maybe that's the pick here. 
and then rally into Hornburg, something we can maybe hope to wheel to make more sack fodder. Ooh, Shadow of the Enemy. Pretty expensive, pretty slow to get going, so I don't think it's a great card. Could be fun. Alternative is probably just to take Mordor Muster, since we're kind of light on two drops so far, so that might be more important to fill out. Makes an orc to enable the Crusher to block. So I think that's going to be the pick here. Okay, got a couple options now. The Bats is always decent, especially if we have lots of tokens. It works pretty well with our orcs. Don't have a lot of food tokens, Patrol can make them. Nasty End is good on a sacrifice deck to draw a couple cards. Could also take Gimli's Axe, which is pretty powerful with some trampling crushers. If there's a bit of a board stall. So maybe we want to try that, or I can just take Crusher number four and just go all in on that strategy, since the bats aren't looking amazing. And there's a pretty fitting land, Mount Doom. I would actually take it if we didn't have another Instigator or Grima to choose from. Grima's another great sack outlet to combine with our instigators, so wish we could take both. Which one to prioritize? Might be Grima, although it, eh, maybe it's still the Brash instigator. This is definitely the more unique effect. There's more sack outlets we can pick up later, but there's only so many ways to steal the opponent's creatures. Troll number three versus Coral's End. Does make a 1-1 one -one we can sacrifice. At this point, I'm not sure if we're playing the king anymore. Do have a rockets? Can maybe wield that land, but there's another rockets versus Gimli's fury. Although Crusher already tramples, so maybe hope to wield the equipment instead. Rush the room could also be a combat trick to play alongside Crusher. There's another four drop and another rockets. Well, with triple rockets, we can pretty consistently splash the king, so that might be the play. Sam's also pretty good with the rockets, now that I think about it. A fourth troll might be a bit overkill. Take another beefy four drop. Alright, so these are kind of our maybes right now. So could use more two drops for sure. Ooh, Ugluk of the White Hand seems pretty awesome in our deck. Opened another forge in you, and uh, yeah, the Ranger's Firebrand would also be great. One mana to damage the Ring tempts you. That's quite a bit of upside, but can pass up on Ugluk. So I don't think we're playing all these white cards. Next up, let's see, the Lord of Westfold 3-3. Three, three. We're not really a human deck, so I think we prefer the Vanguard as a decent 2-drop. Gets to a mass when it dies. Rockets number 4. Can maybe wheel that one, since people haven't been picking it up. Do we prefer Fire Leaper over Vanguard, actually? Yeah, maybe we do. It'll seem slightly better as a 2-drop, and uh, it's not like we have a ton of Sacrifice Synergy, necessarily. So it doesn't seem like a Bats deck so far, despite having a few Amass cards. Um, in terms of 3-drops, we're pretty low, so could play Berserker to fill things out. Greyhavens doesn't really help us splash either. It says Berserker versus Quarrels End, pretty much. I'll grab a Berserker. It's another Orc to enable Quadruple Crusher. Shadowfax could be a fun splash card. Versus Lash of the Balrog, which is pretty effective removal. It does require us to sacrifice, which may or may not be easy to accomplish. The problem with Shadow Fangs is that it cannot put Crusher into play since it has 4 power. 
And if we already play 4-4, four, four, our opponent's going to try to set up their blockers to hold it off. So playing a hasty 4-4 four, four, while good may not necessarily have the best time attacking. Mines of Moria could be nice upside to make some treasure. Otherwise, I kind of like a Gimli's Axe to put on our Trampling Crusher late game, as opposed to taking a War Beast. I think we have enough warm bodies where we just want something to increase our power. Mines could be okay at helping us cast Troll, could also help us splash King. But I kind of want an Axe. There's another rocket, another war beast. Mirror requires a legendaries to become cheaper. My legendary count isn't incredibly high. We've got Gloin. We've got the two creatures that let us steal. Uh, let's just take a rockets. Quadruple rockets. Can sacrifice. Rockets to an improvised club. Do we still get to draw then? I don't think so. Oh no, we can. All right, I think we found a combo here. When the rockets is put into a graveyard, draw card. Just sack it to our club to deal four damage. And we got a Grima. Nice. Pretty good with our double branch instigator. Now maybe a Quarrel's End. How many rockets? Is too many rockets. We want a Rally instead. Yeah, probably. All right, so we've got Lash, Quadruple Rockets, some okay two drops, got another Axe in the end, don't know if I'll play both. And then we probably can get away with a pretty low land count with Triple Troll and Quadruple Rockets. Didn't think we need any planes whatsoever. So we essentially have nine black sources with six swamp triple swamp cycler. Don't have much going on on turn one other than rockets, I suppose. So cycling this turn one does have a real cost when we are playing four rockets in the deck that we might want to play on turn one instead. Um, Basin seems pretty poor when we have to pay 4 mana to pump up our Crusher. Would rather play Axe at that point. And then let's see. Gimli's Fury is a maybe. Rush the Room could actually be the preferred trick to combine with our Trampling Crushers. As something slightly cheaper. And then First Strike could be more relevant than just Double Trample. At 3 mana, all these seem pretty good. Maybe a Berserker can go. Coral's End isn't strictly necessary. And then we have Patrol as well as Grima. And then the uh, Improvised Club as Sacrifice Outlets to combine with our two Instigators. That's good. So let's say we cut these. Well, maybe I still want the uh, Rush the Room. But we'll see. Do we still need to make quite a few cuts? So one Berserker. Do we want Gimli's Axe? King seems pretty easy with Quadruple Rockets. Warg may not be as good as Crusher in this deck. How many Goblins and Orgs do we have? Four Goblins, three Orgs, plus all the Creatures that let us amass, or cars that let us amass, which I guess there aren't that many. Mordor Muster. Probably don't need Desperate Rescue. Could maybe cut one Rockets. 
that we have triple rockets to splash king. Could also just cut the king since we have a lot of four drops already. Might honestly be the move. And then can maybe go down to two rockets just to go with the club. And then we have other random one ones we can maybe sacrifice to the club. But this is a pretty sweet combo. Sam's rescue is pretty nice with uh, triple troll, admittedly. But how relevant is the ring tempting us when we're playing some high-powered creatures to begin with? Probably not super relevant. In terms of our curve, can maybe cut another Berserker. Although it is an orc for crusher purposes. So yeah, the final cuts like Rockets versus Rush the Room versus Berserker. All right, fine, we'll go down to one Rockets. This used to be a four Rockets deck. What happens? Yeah, one first strike trick seems fine. Could also occasionally give haste. Could also be relevant. Okay, and then one axe. Mana base. Do need more red. Nine mountains, but of course triple troll as kind of late game action. Let's give it a try. A troll we can cycle. Nothing going on on turn two. Turn three instigator. Hands a little slow, but might still be a keep. Don't know if we really need to cycle now that we have four mana already. Alright, now I can probably afford to cycle one of them. Alright, let's run one out there, I guess. Sadly, can't give itself haste. It's non-legendary, and it's only a creature the opponent controls. Ooh, nice opponent of Fire Inscription spells deck, so that's potentially the win condition. So now I have to decide between Ogluk or Crusher. Crusher hits a bit harder. Might be better for now. Could double spell next turn with a second instigator and muster. Opponent discards horses of the Brunen. So we can attack all out after playing Ogluk maybe if our opponent wants to trade one ones. Sure. Now they're unlikely to since we would get two plus one counters. Our opponent still goes for it. Well, we're pretty far ahead on board. Rally makes two one ones. But that's where the trample comes in handy. So we can play another crusher and muster, or we could steal one of the one ones. Yeah, let's just play another crusher. Could also play our troll with super menace, but that's maybe more susceptible to interaction. So yeah, right now they're chumping, chumping, taking four. If we steal a creature, they're not quite dead yet. Or are they? I guess we do get to amass two. Opponent's got one blocker. Take nine. Yeah, let's just play Crusher. Can attack first now. Can't think of too many cards that get the opponent out of this mess. If they had white mana, I should have been careful about the uh, double white sweeper that kills larger creatures, but not the case here. All right, we're on the play. Missing black mana, although we can fetch it up with a troll. And then uh, got a decent start. Question is whether to play goblin first or rally. I guess it depends on the board state. Getting in with rally right away might be worth it. 
And then the tokens also set up Lash nicely. Blue-black, so it could be a more controlling strategy. Hoping to pick up some impactful creatures. A land is bad. Alright, let's get in for two. Opponent maybe has the counter spell for creatures. Could also be the one mana counter with uh, counter creature with power or toughness two or less. But nope. Glorious Gale. So it would have worked out better had we gone turn two goblin and then battle on the following turn, perhaps. Nice, there's our crusher on turn four. So let's get in there. Can block at the moment since we don't have any other goblins or orcs. Do want to make sure we keep a 1-1 one -one around to maybe sack to the lash, although we can just cast it for five mana now. That's a 3-3. Yeah, I guess we'll just take it out here. Reason not to attack with the 1-1 is if they have an Edict effect, but that one's, I think, only in green-black. So I don't think I should play around it. Do need to draw some more spells here, since this 4-4 is probably not going to get there by himself. Okay, that's a start. Alright, I'll take it. If they want to trade, that's fine by me. And next turn we can play our troll. Ooh, golem. When it leaves, the ring tempts you. Okay. What's next? Attack for two. We could trade, but the next turn we might just set up an all-out attack. I guess I could just block the 1-1, one -one, trade for Crusher, take two Trample. Although that would make it harder for them to block Troll afterwards. This isn't a bad trade, honestly. But let's just take it for now. Drawing a combo trick here would have been nice, but yeah, if we attack, put on slightly just putting 1-1 one, one, and 3-1 in front. Yeah, that seems fine. Get to trample for a bunch, play troll. If they triple block, I'll take out uh, three power dudes. So they could have the minus 3 minus 0 until end of turn, which is a reason to put golem first, I suppose. But nope. All right, hopefully their last card's not a counter spell. Okay, we've got our troll. So currently they cannot block it, and they are at five, but they have two cards in hand. Ring is on level two, so they could potentially loot. Okay, so now they could triple block my troll and golem's back. Although, hmm, they left themselves without black mana, so now they're just dead to the troll attacking, potentially. Potentially a misstep. Alright, I'll take it. Super menace gets there. On the play with a solid hand. Goblin into Gloin which was passed to us pretty early in pack one. And yep, yeah, could be quite powerful under the right circumstances. Don't often see Goad outside of Commander. Put on red-green. It's gonna pass it back. And there's our Crusher. Smite the Deathless, yeah. 
Very nice removal spell. Could have taken out Gloin as well. One of the few clean answers to the Witch King, which can become indestructible. And there's a second copy. Alright, our opponent means business. Well, we found a secret to getting around Smite to Deathless. Play creature with four toughness. And our opponent is stuck on two lands. Having to play Fall just to hit your land drops is not where the opponent wants to be, since now they don't get to put counters on their creature. So is it time to put an axe on the Crusher? I think so. Three turn clock. And then Rocket's a great combo with a club, since we can sacrifice Rocket, still draw. Opponent passes, there's another Crusher. So play Rocket's attack, keep up club if necessary, and then just play another Crusher most likely. With this mana, I don't think we're concerned about any specific sweeper. Although, ooh, Entish Restoration. If they go double white here all of a sudden, could potentially be bad. Get Swamp and Forest. There's a sweeper that could deal three to all my creatures. That's not enough. So turn the team sideways. And as long as one creature connects, Club can finish off the opponent. All right, sweet. So yeah, some nice early removal. Probably the reason they kept being able to cast those and then fall, but they weren't able to find another land in time. Okay, we're on the play. Missing black mana as well as our Swamp Cycler. So no easy access to black. So we're looking at Fire Leaper. Any third land plays Instigator, but then we might be stuck do have plenty of goblins and orcs for warg. Grima could also be okay with instigator if we can set up that combo. So there is quite a bit of potential here. And we can always pump fire leaper if we don't have anything else going on. Not a great hand. On the draw I would definitely keep. On the play it's borderline. I think I should still keep between swamps and swamp cyclers. We've got quite a few outs. Put on blue-red, so they may not immediately present a target for Instigator. Never mind, a couple of 1-1s. One so I could just trade for both, although Grima just blocks them quite well. I'll take it. And then we can try and set up the Instigator combo next turn. Could also Steal and then Lash, which may be even better. And next turn just play work, make them play an expensive creature we can lash. Alright, so this implies either 3 damage for 2 mana or Gimli's pump spell. I think it's reasonable to just take it here since Grima could be quite nice, although with lash it's a little bit less important admittedly. So maybe forcing them to use whatever pump spell they have is fine since they won't be able to develop their board more. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if we didn't have Lash, I wouldn't have blocked there. Now we could play Crusher. Over Warg. Does that matter? It's pretty close, they're about the same. But we've got our scheduled appointment on turn 4 with the Crusher, so I don't want to be late. Since, uh... He can get pretty angry. Alright, there's a nice pump spell. So now, probably just attack with Crusher. They want to go for Instigator unless their opponent presents another creature I can kill with a Lash. And don't feel like trading Fire Leaper for a 1-1. Opponent could of course have a counter spell here, but I'm gonna add something to the board. Just a Gandalf. Okay, that's a nice target for Lash. 
and uh, Instigator can still steal it as well. Although never mind, it's not legendary, so we would have to steal the token and then kill Gandalf with Lash. Be very careful with Auto Tapper here, since I can already imagine the Auto Tapper not keeping a black. So they got to bounce. This becomes a ring bearer. Good trade, but we actively want the opponent to have a creature, although, hmm. It is now legendary because it's a ring bearer, so now we can't actually steal anything with Instigator. That's a little awkward. And an improvised club kills our warg. That was a good turn for them. So, now what? Could attack with Fire Leaper if they block, we pump and trade, but then I can't develop my board, so I think it's just play Crusher and pass. Could also rush the room to hit for five, since it would give it haste, since it's a... No, never mind, it's a troll. Have to be very careful. Goblins and orcs, but not trolls, gain haste. Now our opponent probably knows what we're holding, but that's okay. Foray of orcs, that's a good one. Kills our fire leaper. So if I rush the room, I can increase its power to kill the 2-2, but we want them to have the 2-2 to set up our instigator, so... Can go face. All right, it's finally time. And then, is there any way I can like attack first? I don't think so. All right, we'll just kill Gandalf. Make sure we sacrifice the right army. That's the one we stole. Could still rush the room to give this haste. Is that worth it? Hit for seven, put him to seven. Now let's just keep it as a trick. Flamesmith, that's fine. And times two. Okay, let's smash. Opponent suspects we have a rush to room. We'll just let the trade happen. Deal five. And hope we can get another attack in with a crusher. Okay. Also have the option of playing goblin. And giving it haste, but then it just gets chumped. Even if it does kill the creature beforehand. So I think just turn the team sideways and see what happens. Yeah, I don't think I need to go for lethal. If our opponent has a 2-mana bounce spell, it would be a disaster. Probably has a counter spell here. I guess it would have been a reason to play Goblin main phase one to make sure they were tapped out and then go for rush the room. All right, so now we're still fine if our opponent attacks, since we could give the Goblin haste. All right, we should have uh, gotten there now. Just double checking. Goblin or orc? Orc, goblin, troll. So, can play a crusher. Goblin, give goblin haste. And there we have it. Okay, so no black. And that's a bit of a concern. Turn to Rally, and then any fourth lands, and we go Crusher into Crusher. Yeah, it's probably okay. So now drawing a mountain would be really bad, since we don't want land 5. Unless it's a swamp. So a swamp is fine. Three drops are good, at least the ones we can cast. How about a rockets? 
So we can play that next turn. Although then I still can't muster. And I guess there's no point in playing Rally into a 2-2 anyways. So sure. Play Rockets and then next turn we can muster potentially. If they're playing Sheriff on turn 2 then uh, their hand must be pretty stacked since you would normally wait to exile a creature with it. There's our black mana. Yeah, we're pretty far behind on board already. Okay, maybe keep rockets to combine with the uh, club to deal for damage. This is also an orc to let the crusher block, which is why I played it over rally. Alright, under a bit of pressure now. Protector. Well, if this 4-4 can actually stabilize us, we might be okay, but I'm not counting on it. So, we can sank the rockets at any point, but I don't think we're doing better than playing Crusher here. Maybe the Warg is a more reliable blocker in case it can deal with the 1-1. So I guess there's no real downside to sacking this, unless I find a club. Yeah, let's just play Crusher. Alright, cross our fingers. If I take 7, 8 down to 5, then I don't know if a uh, second Crusher next turn is going to be good enough. Blade's also not bad with... Uh, a Lady of Rohan giving first strike and vigilance. This looks like a club. Sack 1-1 one, one kill crusher, yep. Yeah, I think we're dead. So if I jump now, the next turn crusher can block. So then I would have to go rally plus berserker. Yeah, it's probably still the play. Need to find some sort of removal spell. Well, there's our club. That's pretty good. Play Berserker, sack rockets to the club. A1's pretty annoying with the uh, sword in play. Giving first rank and vigilance. So that might be the bigger threats. And then Berserker trying to trade off for Sheriff. And then I can potentially let our opponents trigger a win, although then they could give Sheriff first strike. And this still seems fine. So I'll put a stop here before a win triggers. Well, I guess uh, the stop didn't last. That's unfortunate. Alright, they targeted Protector anyway, so didn't get punished. Hope to trade Berserker for Sheriff. Does feel weird not uh, killing Protector here though. Take 5 down to 4. But at least we can jump for a while if there's no Flyer. Yeah, I don't think we're beating First Rank and Vigilance here, so... Let's try this. Another protector. It's bad news. A rally is not an orc or a goblin, so a crusher wouldn't be able to block. This could have been very nice with a club. Now, I guess we can go goblin plus crusher still, and that'll let the crusher block. So then they would move the sword, can trade for the equipped creature. Yeah, I guess it technically keeps us alive. But we're dead to pretty much anything. Yeah, the one blade's pretty effective here, getting past our four fours. Drawing an equipment when beating down can be quite nice. It's like a repeatable pump spell. Kind of 
kind of like eating the 3-3 three, three and trumping the 5-4 now. So they're not going to attack with it. Alright, then we'll trade. So now we can buy a bit of time with uh, Rally at least. If I play Instigator, we add a bit more power and toughness to the board. Although it's possible I need to keep this to set up a Wombo Combo. Although we've already used our club, still have Lash to maybe combo with it. Yeah, I think I should just play it. Hit him for one. Okay. So now we wouldn't mind drawing our six mana trolls. Not sure what our opponent's holding at this point. They haven't used any pump spells. There doesn't seem to be removal. Could just be lands or maybe a third color they haven't found yet. Ooh, second blade. That's good. So now we want to try to trade with our creatures at all costs, pretty much. 7-5. Yeah, I have to try to trade. And then we have a couple options. A couple 2-drops and a 1-1. One one, or three 1-1s one and a 2-2. Two two. I do have another instigator I could draw, and it is a legendary, so that one definitely wants to block. Yeah, I probably prefer just having extra bodies to chump and buy time. Okay. So we can trade for the token now, but problem is every creature opponent draws is going to be potentially equipped by two blades. So their creatures are definitely better than ours for the time being. We have our own Gimli's Axe we could draw. That would maybe keep up with Double Blade. Ooh, wow. Aylmer, 4-4 four, four Haste. They can equip it if they want. Well, I should probably trade for Aylmer at this point. Chump the 5-3. As opposed to trade for the token. Chump Aylmer, which at least leaves me with an extra blocker, so I have an extra turn to top deck. But if I'm not trading for Aylmer, I feel like I'm just not going to beat it. Okay, Nazgul was decent. That's why we keep our land in hand, in case we can loot it away. Still dead to any removal. Alright, pass the turn. Feels like we're just delaying the inevitable. Eagles of the North. And there's a Crusher. GG's. Top decking the club gave us a bit of a chance. I think killing um, Eowyn was the right move since I don't think we would have beaten first rank Vigilance every turn. Dual wielding swords as an eagle. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we've got a pretty decent hand here. 2-3-4. Grimas got a bit of synergy with uh, tokens from Rally. If we can find our instigator to steal a creature, that would be quite powerful as well. Put on the green white. Don't think we faced the halfling deck yet. Definitely stop drawing lands now. Merry. Pretty good. There's another Crusher. 
play Grima and pass. Grima's ability could also be quite impactful for opponents relying on the life gain from food tokens. Mary attacks. Interesting. So they could give it plus four, plus four if they sack a food token. They could have deal one damage for each creature and food token, which is three right now. Plus four, plus four is going to be hard to beat, admittedly. So maybe I just block with the two one ones, force them to use a trick, and if they trade, they trade. Okay. They got their food token. Ooh, Sam to get it back makes sense too. All right, they got some value. We're just gonna play our crusher. That's all we know how to do. Sheriff, yeah, that's a good one. Can exile crusher. Or Grima. Is there points on the beat town plan here? Don't know if we're winning the race, but we'll see. Now I could play Fire Leaper so that Crusher can block and just kind of hit the brakes. Or we can smash, play another Crusher, but then we're taking 8 down to 6. Yeah, it's probably just Fire Leaper pass. Could also Fire Leaper attack for 4, and then Fire Leaper can pump itself to block profitably, but then if they have a single removal spell, we're in trouble. I don't love doing this. I guess if they have removal, they can remove Fire Leaper. But if it's like a fog, I guess it would turn it into a spirit. Is it in addition to its types or does it turn it all together into spirits? Let's see. Fog. Yeah, it loses all other creature types. So if they fog my Fire Leaper, then Crusher also can't block anymore. Hmm. Oh, just gonna hope they don't have it. If they have a different removal spell kill Fire Leaper, I can at least pump it. Yeah, let's hang back. Don't think we can win the race necessarily. And Reaper attacks. Make a food token. So now if I block with Fire Leaper and pump it, could also pump first and then block. What's the advantage of doing that? Is there a trick that says kill a blocking creature? I guess there is a one mana instant. Kill a creature that's blocked or blocking a legendary. This is legendary. So then if I would block and then pump, they can destroy this before I get to pump its power and then I can't kill the sheriff. So that's a reason to pump first and then block. Sure. Alright, let's shoot the conies. Surprised they didn't fire it off in response then. So now I can kill Sheriff. Get Grima back. Yeah, this could have worked out poorly for me, but it didn't. And there's a Cave Troll. So Crusher attacks since it can block anyway. Would be a good time to draw Gimli's Axe, for instance. Watchdogs could be quite powerful with all these food tokens and Mary making even more. At least Grima prevents life gain. So they could now attack with Hobbit, pay three to tap the troll, and then have another food token so Watchdogs turns into a 5-5. Five five. All right, opponent reconsiders. Now is nice. Can double spell and then... Yeah, dogs can only make a plus one counter at sorcery speed. Okay. I 
The only concern here is our opponent having the uh, sweeper destroying all creatures with power 3 or greater. But yeah, if they have it, so be it. And Mary attacks. What do we think of Mary attacking us? I don't buy it. Yes. And Grima stops the life gain, so. Turn the team sideways. And that does it. Awesome. There we go. Definitely had some close games, as well as some games where our opponents kind of just stumbled and we were able to steamroll them by just curving out. This is the deck for anyone that missed it. Red Black Aggro, Quadruple Crusher, and then we had a small Steal and Sacrifice theme as well with Double Instigator, and then a couple sack outlets like Grima, the Patrol, the uh, two mana Improvised Club, which as it turns out can also sacrifice the Wizard's Rockets and still draw a card, so that's kind of neat. And then uh, Lash of the Balrog, another sack outlet. Did not get to see a ton of Ugluk in action, but Seems pretty good in this archetype. And then the Cave Troll, also quite nice. Cycle it early, play it late. Gimli's Axe, also a way to improve our 4 4 Trampler in case it's not large enough. So, yeah, overall, quite happy with how this deck played out. In the sideboard, we had a few interesting options as well. Started out our draft with a pack one, pick one king. Started looking like a black white deck, but then just picked up a few crushers and settled nicely into red-black, despite not having a ton of uh, rares. Do we have any rares? I guess we could pass to Gloin pretty early in the draft. That was the first signal to kind of move into red, potentially. But yeah, overall, can't complain. Yeah, 15 lands, although when you have three basic land cyclers, it's not really the same as having 15 lands. But for now, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.